It started with a torch passed along by wounded warriors who have all persevered through their share of obstacles. All week long on the field and on the court, they showed that same determination. This is Warrior Games 2011. Welcome, I'm Petty Officer Michael Wilkin. Well, it's a battle for bragging rights for 200 wounded warriors, and we're right here coming to you for a special around the services. Our team of reporters, producers, and photojournalists have been covering the events all week in and around the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Let's get a check on how things stand in the race for the Chairman's Cup, which will be awarded at the closing ceremony Saturday. The Marine Corps is leading the way with 56 medals and 100.8 points. The Navy Coast Guard team medaled nine times for second place with 23.4. The Army is in third place with 19 medals and 19 points. Air Force medaled five times for 18 points and fourth place. And Special Ops, which is new to the games, has one medal and 4.5 points. All week long, these competitors have given 110% during competition. Marine Staff Sergeant Josh Hauser is part of our team covering the events. Well, thank you. And uh, if you've been watching the games throughout the week and watching some of these amazing athletes, you may have noticed uh, some of the adaptive equipment that some of our more severely wounded veterans are using in order to compete. That's Chuck Sketch, a Marine. He's also a double amputee, and he's blind. The bike? Well, that's the Chuck Wagon. It's terrific um, because you can feel the, the, the wind in your face, and that feels so good, especially when you're doing you know, 40 downhill. It feels like you're on a, you know, a highway sticking your head out the window, and it's a total, total adrenaline rush, and it's just, just beyond incredible. Ride to Recovery founder John Warden designed the ride with Chuck in mind. Coming on the front, and it's a hand cycle on the back. And the cool feature on this bike is it has independent steering. So the guy on the back can pedal at a separate cadence than the guy on the front. Crank it out. I, I don't rate to have something named after me, but um, I, I just love this because for the longest time, I thought it'd be impossible for me to do anything involved with bicycles, but uh, John Warren, he, he, if, he, if you got the, the, the desire to get on the bike, he'll make it happen. The Chuck Wagon is just one of any number of adaptive bikes geared up for wounded athletes. Hand cycles are staples of their collection. I just was in the dumps. I mean, depressed. I lost my third career. And then finally I saw sports. And the first ride I did was Ride to Recovery. All right. And my husband thought, oh, she's going to do 30, 40 miles. I thought that too. John, I did 250, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> it was like wicked sweet. It was like, yep. Yeah. There's the warrior goddess. Warrior goddess. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly, you do, you, you use your arms and then you're going to shift here for the smaller cogs. Uh -huh. And then you shift here for the bigger cogs. Now, this is called, where I'm in the granny ring, as they say. Yeah. This is my first ride in over a year, so I'm uh I may look I may look uh, appearances may be deceiving. <laughs> it's all about the now. But the now sometimes includes the then. But I got wounded in Iraq. But I've been to uh, Afghanistan, first Gulf War. I've been to all the shooting that shoot, man. I, was, I, was, I did 26 years in the Army. Went three tours in Vietnam, man. I, I got wounded with First ID. First ID, yeah, Big Red One. That's big right. Red, you gonna be big one, be a big Red One. All right. Mike McNaughton was wounded, too. He rides a fairly standard bike, but it's his leg that's tricked out. And it's a suction socket, and it stays in with this valve right here. And then we have a regular hydraulic knee that I turned it, I turned it down so it could spin really freely. And I had a regular foot, um, uh, it's like a carbon fiber foot, and I cut it down um, to the point where I can walk on it, but uh, also when I'm riding, it's not in the way. In this pack, the wheels are always turning. We get a lot of guys who come to us and say, I want to ride. My doctor told me that I can't ride. If someone's telling you no, that should be fuel. You know, you can't do that. Well, yeah, I can. So that's what we do. And we help them achieve those goals. You got to look after you you're right, you're right. yourself. You don't want to okay, wear yourself out. Thanks, yeah. You're right. Yeah, you can have this pill. <laughs> I'll be a relaxed warrior goddess. Watching these guys 
go from a place where they're depending on, you know, drugs to a spot where they find that exercise and, uh, and camaraderie away from the battlefield with a group of cyclists helps them heal. And it's amazing. Now, we wanted to let you know that at the beginning of that piece, uh, the chuck wagon that Chuck Sketch and John Warden actually were in the Los Angeles Marathon back in March. They came in third place, but they want first place. So John's actually going back to make a couple of tweaks to make the chuck wagon faster. All right, Staff Sergeant Houses, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll check back with you a little later on in the show. Coming up on this special edition of Around the Services, we'll have more coverage from Warrior Games. And don't forget to check out pentagonchannel.mil, where you can find our daily Warrior Game podcast, news and information available when you want it. Welcome back to our special edition of Around the Services, Warrior Games. The stories behind the competitors are very inspiring to say the least. Specialist David Oliver won bronze medals in the 800 meter dash upper body and the 200 meter dash upper body. He and his wife joined me to talk about the games this week. How are you guys doing today? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. How was it competing this year? Um, this is my first time and I'd recommend it to anybody. I'm pretty damn proud of my performance. So. And how were you wounded? Uh, it was December 28th, 2009, a Humvee rollover crushed my right arm. Okay. And how does the Warrior Games help you and your wife and be motivated to still be successful as well as to help you heal? Uh, personally, it's just inspired me to give literally 110%. On the last 200 meters of the 800 sprint, I just had the look of death on my face, ready to fall over. And with my team and the army cheering me on, I just forced myself to go that extra mile and it felt pretty good. That Carry is, that on to the rest of my life. Yeah. That is absolutely inspiring. And for you, how, how important it is for you to be here supporting him? It's it's amazing because you get to see them participate and be so active and they just get so much full of life when they're participating and doing something that they love. And have you guys been able to bond with the other families this week and what's that been like? Um, well, definitely you find a bond with other families. They've been through so much as well as you have, you can relate to them. And besides watching him compete, what have been some of your other favorite parts of this week? Um, I think just being here at the Olympic Center and everything and walking around and seeing all the different sites and the mountains are beautiful. Everything has been great. And how does it make you feel when you're able to watch him compete? Really proud. <laughs> very, very proud. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your time here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, on the archery field, competition was fierce, but Andre Shelby from the Navy Coast Guard team shot, outshot his competitors in the compound bow class to earn the gold medal. Silver went to Kenneth Harker from Team Army, and bronze went to Team Marines. In the recurve class, Daniel Govier from the Marines was able to hold off the other archers and snag the gold medal. Travis Aiken from the Army came in second, and Stephen Lunt from the Marines won bronze. Well, sports like archery have become a popular means of rehabilitation for wounded warriors. This week's Warrior Games is providing a stage for many who are working their way back from catastrophic injuries to demonstrate their adaptive skills. Before the games began, we caught up with one silver medalist archer who says if he hadn't been hurt, he'd never have picked up a bow. shooting in April of last year. We went to the game to May, obviously. Somehow I came out with the medal. <laughs> Not sure how that worked out too well yet. Staff Sergeant Curtis Wilson was wounded four years ago. An IED explosion in Iraq left him with multiple leg fractures and a broken hand. After an injury, you kind of fall apart for, for the most part at first. He struggled. First to get back on his feet, then to stay there. It wasn't until about a year ago he found his weapon. At first I didn't think it was going to be part of my therapy, but it came out to be because, uh, like I said, I had a right, right hand fracture. Wow. Archery also helps with balance. While his other sport, basketball, helped renew his team spirit. I played basketball in high school, so anything about like wheelchair basketball, you don't get the same feelings. At least I didn't think I was going to get the same feelings as I did, but I uh, brought 
you know, more people together for that's what the whole purpose of the games was anyways, to bring you together. This year, he's keeping his eye on a single target. Goal is always, I look at maybe the Paralympics one day, and that'll be a goal that I'll keep in front of me. Defense.gov has an entire section devoted to Warrior Games. Just log on and type in Warrior Games. The site contains extensive articles, athlete profiles, and other important information about the games. Well, Warrior Games is our big story this week, but there are other developments making news. Here's a look at some of the headlines. Defense Secretary Robert Gates hosted the groundbreaking for a new elementary school Thursday at Fort Riley, Kansas. He told the military families that he recalled last year's town hall meeting where he heard firsthand about school overcrowding on the base when Congress appropriated $250 million to revitalize the neediest of installation schools. Fort Riley was awarded some of that money. The $26 million facility is scheduled to open for the 2012-2013 school year. Flood evacuations will begin this weekend in parts of Louisiana. Officials in Butler Rose went door to door posting evacuation notices and telling people the city limits will be blocked. This weekend, the Red Cross is offering help and the National Guard has built a two mile levy of HESCO barriers in 48 hours. Many residents say they're surprised at the speed and efficiency of the guards work. Well, First Lady Michelle Obama dressed down Thursday for some community service at Bowling Air Force Base in Washington. The event focused on painting a mural and benches for a youth center there. This is part of the First Lady's initiative to support military families. She said giving back to the spouses and children of those serving in the military is priceless. They are making sacrifices that many Americans don't even understand. And to know that they've got a resource like this, making their lives just a little bit brighter and a little bit easier is just what we want to see in this country. Congressional spouses also joined the First Lady for the military family-focused event. Coming up on this special edition of Around the Services Warrior Games, we'll have more coverage of the Warrior Games here at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Welcome back to our special edition of Around the Services. Petty Officer Steve Lipscomb battled stage 4 gastric cancer and won. He's currently in remission and joins me to talk about this week. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk with us. Thanks for having us out. Thank you. So, congratulations on your remission, first of all. Wow, awesome feeling, isn't it? No, when, when did you find out? Wednesday before I came out here. So, what a complete honor. My uh, doctor came up to me and said, uh, hey, uh, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean? He says, you're in remission. I was like, hey, I got to go to Colorado Springs. We got Warrior Games coming up. I got to beat cancer. So luckily, uh, with God's help and a good support system, so far, so good. And what has this last last year been like for you? How, how tough has it been on you? It's a challenge, you know. It's, it's, it's what you put it for. To, uh, you put a mental aspect to it, and you beat it. And it's a competition between cancer and, and myself. And I always said cancer is in my body, but it's not in my heart and my spirit. That's awesome. It's truly inspiring. Thank you. How, how does it feel to be here competing with other wounded warriors? A humbled and blessed opportunity. I mean, you meet so many men and women that have been through different situations and overcome them. And that's what this Warrior Games is all about. And we bring out the best in competition, but camaraderie as well. And what inspired you to compete this year in the Warrior Games? Obviously, the remission diagnosis was a big, big, benef big factor in that. But were you planning on competing anyway, or? Absolutely. I mean, nothing's going to hold me back from competing. Um, I'm always in competition with myself. Uh, I take ownership of the problem and, and look forward for a challenge. And this is definitely a challenge. Got some great competitors out, competitors out here, and we're having fun. And what advice would you give to someone who's interested in competing but feels that their being wounded is holding them back and they almost feel hopeless? Get out of bed and fight. Game on. You know, nothing can hold you back except your mind and your heart. If you can do that. And, uh, and bring that on, bring you know, game on. We always, uh, Coach uh, Master Chief Retired Will Wilson says game on, and that's what exactly it is all about. 
and get up and fight and make a difference in your neighborhood. Well, yours is just obviously one of many inspiring stories. And Steve, we thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today thank and you. enjoy the rest of your time here in Colorado. Absolutely, thank you. Go yep, Navy. Thank you. Coming up on this special edition of Around the Services, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Admiral Mike Mullen, has a special message for the competitors. And we'll take a look back at the event that kicked everything off, the opening ceremonies. up with Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Admiral Mike Mullen, during the taping of the Pentagon Channel's Chairman's Podcast to get a very special message for this year's competitors. Hi, I'm Mike Mullen. Congratulations to all of you who've competed this week, and special congratulations to the winners of the Chairman's Cup. These Warrior Games have tested your physical and mental skills, your strength and endurance, and you have displayed the hallmark of our profession, unparalleled teamwork. In the eyes of every man and woman in uniform serving around the world, you are more than champions, you are each an inspiration. You have demonstrated how fitness and competition can help heal the body, the mind, and the soul. That's a message worth sharing, and yours is a story worth telling. But now is no time to rest. Take what you've accomplished here, what you've learned here, and what you've seen here to inspire others to achieve their dreams and their independence. Lastly. As a challenge, I ask each of you to be the conduits between our recovering warriors and the local communities who provide support. You know the need and you know the importance. Please reach out and share your wisdom with others. Thank you for your service and congratulations. The energy we saw in Monday night's opening ceremonies of Warrior Games turned into a very spirited competition, competition between the services. Yeah, that's right, and it was just right off the bat, Petty Officer Wilkin. It, the, the moment began when each of the services passed the torch onto the next. Let's take a look back at the opening ceremonies. Not only do we, I got to carry the torch, I mean, we could say that in our lifetime, kind of like a bucket list almost, but, you know, carrying the torch gave me a feeling of representing the men and women that paid the ultimate sacrifice to our country, as well as the athletes that are here. Hearing these people's stories and where they've come from and what they've overcome, it's unbelievable. It's, it makes you, it compels you to do better. And the better I do, I just hope that somebody else, I hope that I can compel others to do better as well. It's more more honor being picked by the team to, to represent the Marine Corps. And uh, it's probably one of the highest honors I've, I've ever received. And uh, just proud to be out there. The final handoff from the new Special Ops team to Medal of Honor recipient, Staff Sergeant South Junta, mark the official start. Sergeant Junta is the first living person to receive the Medal of Honor since the Vietnam War. It kind of it gives me goosebumps just kind of going over it right now. At the time, you know, it's, it's too surreal to, to actually imagine, but, uh, you know, to be able to salute them, and receive the torch from them, and just just to see the the spirit and the will behind all these men and women that are competing, just it, it blows my mind. It's very cool. Two hundred athletes, each with their own story, and ready to compete. And one service branch will take home the cup. I wonder which service it will be. I hear the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard have a powerful team. Or maybe the U.S. Army. And finally, I'm sure last year's champions, the Marines, will be very strong. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the, the brave. 
Well, Staff Sergeant, you've been here since those absolutely breathtaking and exciting opening ceremonies. What's this week been like as an outsider kind of looking in? It's been incredible. I wasn't here for the Warrior Games last year. I certainly hope that uh, I could be here for them next year. Um, you see folks who have lost so much. Um, but there's one thing they haven't lost, apparently, and that is definitely their uh, fighting competitive spirit because they're having a blast, uh, and it's just great to see, and as you say, it's very inspiring. All right, well, that's going to do it for our coverage from Warrior Games 2011. I'm Petty Officer Michael Wilkin. And I'm Staff Sergeant Josh Hauser. For everyone here at the Pentagon Channel, thanks for watching.